Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Canine Catcher. Today's topic is how dangerous is the job of being an animal control officer? So our job is pretty much a dangerous job. We deal with a lot of uh, animals that are aggressive, sick or injured, and talking about just the animals first. So when we're dealing with a sick or injured animal, they don't understand that we're there to help them. A lot of the times they want to bite us and attack us just so they can get away from us. But again, they don't know that we're trying to get them some sort of help. Now dealing with these situations, it can also vary by location. Sometimes you might have something as simple as a sick cat in the front yard of a house, walk up to it, pick it up, take it to the vet, and then on really crazy scenarios, you do have a dog hit by a car on a major highway where if you're the first one making it there, we're the ones blocking traffic. So we're trying to avoid getting hit by a car. We're also trying not to get bit by the dog at the exact same time and hoping also the dog isn't uh, injured enough to where it can still be mobile. Also worst case scenario is uh, freeways. I've had plenty of dogs on the freeways get hit by cars and you're out there with in our case CHP to block the traffic and you're hoping some idiot doesn't try to go around the barricade just because they're late for work. So dealing with the animals alone when they're injured that gets pretty intense. Again they don't know that we're there to help them so they're always trying to um, attack us and bite us. Now on the flip side is when we're dealing with aggressive animals. Most of the time this is gonna be dogs that we're dealing with. They get out of someone's yard, not really socialized, and they just start going on a spree of attacking people or other animals. So those situations do get pretty intense. A lot of the times the police officers are looking at you to try to resolve the situation without them having to step in. And those can be pretty intense. I've had to lock myself plenty of times with an aggressive large dog that's just run into an open gate after I was chasing it, close the gate, and then it's just me and the dog and a catch pole. And again, I'm putting myself at risk because we don't have any other methods but a catch pole to grab it. So that's dealing with aggressive animals. Again, we can get seriously hurt uh, by doing that. Uh, even on the other end, you know, some agencies we use ropes as in uh, to lasso the animals. I've actually been out with animal control officers that have actually broken fingers while roping the animal while catching it, but the rope was caught on their hand and broke some fingers. So I'm trying to deal with an aggressive dog that's running literally through a college while now dealing with the partner that's injured. So it runs the gamut on how crazy one call can turn into when it just came in as a simple loose dog call. Now, the other thing that some people probably don't think about is when you're dealing with animals, they also can be sick. Sometimes that includes having a bunch of fleas on them. If you're dealing with injured deers, you got ticks to deal with and you even have mites. So when we're dealing with these animals, if we're not being careful or don't notice something, we can pick up some little bugs and uh, critters ourselves. So that's something we have to worry about. In addition to anything that's like a virus, a lot of the times when we're dealing with wildlife, luckily not too many times dealing with any sort of a domestic animal having rabies, but definitely dealing with bats, skunks, and raccoons. Those animals can usually carry the rabies virus. So if we get bit by them, you know, we do run a risk of contracting the virus. So that's why anytime when we're working with those type of animals, we're using a lot of caution with it because, you know, that's something that can turn fatal for us. So those are kind of the different aspects of dangerous that we deal with just dealing with the animals on that category. And then we also have the humans. So we do wear bulletproof vest not all agencies when you see animal control officers will be wearing those vests and unfortunately humans are usually the most dangerous creatures of us all 
they don't want us taking their animals, they're ill-informed why we're there, and they would prefer to injure us instead of their animals being taken. Unfortunately, when I did start this business, I didn't wear a bulletproof vest. That was kind of unheard of. And we did have, not myself, up in Northern California, uh, more specifically Sacramento area, there was an animal control officer that was shot and killed with a shotgun through a door. And that situation actually brought up the concept of is our job dangerous? Before that, you couldn't even have a conversation of our job is dangerous because no one wanted to hear it. Even though our officers, uh, what ones I've worked with, have personally dealt with people pulling guns on them, luckily not pulling the trigger. Our canvassers, the ones that actually go collect licenses, being robbed at gunpoint. Uh, staff telling me that when they've gone to calls, since sometimes the uniforms we do wear it look kind of like sheriffs, that they've had people make statements like, I thought you were the sheriffs, I was about to pull out my gun until you said you were animal control. So, so we also, you know, the funny part is, we also deal with going to people's homes the most. When you think about cops, a lot of times they end up dealing with people in their vehicles, so it's something mobile. But when you're dealing with people's houses, they have access to whatever they normally have. And that's about 99% of our calls are at people's homes to deal with a situation or a problem, which then usually leads to a problem for us. So just a little bit more specifically re regarding the officer in Sacramento that was killed, uh, the, the person, the dog owner was being evicted the sheriff's department of that area and the loan agent came out, legally evicted him and left. They contacted animal control to say there's some dogs left behind, you know, please come pick them up tomorrow. The officer went back the next day with the loan officer, just had one door knock and the owner at night had snuck back in the house and just stood behind the door waiting for someone most likely he probably thought the police were coming back to knock on the door and the second he knocked on the door he pulled the trigger and of course ended up killing the officer now like i said that actually brought up a conversation saying do animal control officers need bulletproof vests Yes, we deal with a lot of dangerous situations and a lot of dangerous people. I will have public, you know, uh, coworkers that work in different divisions that don't deal with anything with animals ask, like, is a dog really going to shoot you? And then I always have to bring up the story of the officer and other officers that have been killed and they quickly change their face to go, wow, that is pretty dangerous. And when they think, back on how uh, enthusiastic I'll say animal owners are with their own pets a lot of times they would die for their pet and unfortunately we're the ones in the way so our job is extremely dangerous and that's why I wanted to make this specific video regarding if you're trying to get into the industry again when I'm sharing these videos it's not a way to scare you about it it is just a reminder that if you're watching this out of just curiosity, that yes, your friendly neighborhood animal control officer is dealing with a lot of crazy scenarios just as the police and the fire department are on a daily basis. Of course, when before I got in this industry, I didn't even know you called animal control for anything. I didn't even know we really existed. And that's usually what most people say when they uh, hear about our job and you know, most get pretty curious about it. But, you know, in a nutshell, over the past 13, 14 years that I've been doing this, there have been a handful of animal control officers that have been uh, killed, murdered in the line of duty. And, you know, that's always one of the uh, fearful things when we go out there is that, like they always say, you it's a good day when you get to come home in one piece. So, 
I'll kind of just end the video there. The if you do have any questions on again the career, further questions from what I said, drop them in the comments below, or you can contact any of the social media that uh, I put here. And uh, you know, always feel free to reach out. I can again have had people reach out asking about the job or getting uh, some advice on what they should do in their career. Uh, but you know, here at the end, I will go ahead and post the uh, some of the animal control officers that we have lost. Um, like I said, you know, it's just one of the horrible parts of the job, and you know. But we still go out there every single day, every single man and woman and anything in between. We go out there every day because we're trying to do it for the animals. I thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, feel free to subscribe and um, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.